They don't read sign language too. You don't know what the Lord done for me.
Good to be in the house of God this morning. Getting anything is good when you get to come to church. We're going this morning to the book of Daniel. You know, anything will keep some people out of church. Can I get an amen? We've got a lot of people missing this morning. I'm sure this little flurry of snow has kept people out. But we're here. And I'm glad to be here. I've got to find my verses. Daniel chapter 3. I just figured I'd preach old timey this morning. Is that all right? That was three of them. Is that all right if I just preach old timey? Uh, last night I sat down about 8 o'clock, opened up the Bible, and just started reading, and it just got on me to preach some old school stuff. I might end up preaching like I preached when I was 20. How many knows it's good that every now and then just be reminded of our foundation? I'm going to get real comfortable. I'm taking out my suit, jacket, and my tie. Daniel chapter 3. We're going to pick up about verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, <coughs> God, 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 but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods. We will not worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury and the form of his visions was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. He commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats their hoes and their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, the burnt furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto the counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. And the king answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose Hallelujah. walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. That never gets over. Hallelujah. Every time you read it, you just want to shout amen. Hallelujah. Y'all can be seated. Let me give you this morning for just a few moments. So I just made just a few notes so I can remind myself to give just a foundation of Scripture. 
I want to give you a foundation of Nebuchadnezzar, this king that had come into power in Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar had studied the land of Israel. He placed in his heart to lead the children of Israel out of Israel and take them into the land of captivity, the land of Babylon. In his study, he studied their laws and he studied the armies that they knew, that, that, that they had. He knew about their 16 judges and in fact he studied their 19 kings and one wicked king queen by the name of Jezebel. He knew their prophets by name and had memorized their prophecies. He knew their time of captivity in Egypt's bondage and also knew their revivals under men of God that had happened back in those early days. Yet after knowing all of this, Nebuchadnezzar still wanted to take them into Babylonian captivity. It did not matter to him that God, what God had done to them or for them before. He was not concerned with all the kings that had suffered defeat by the God of this people. He felt himself to be mightier and greater and stronger than all the other kings. His army was stronger. His men were greater. His mind was more determined to overcome this God and this people and to make a spectacle of them before other nations and before other people. Nebuchadnezzar, according to Bible history, would go down in history as one of the most dominating kings that had ever reigned. He brought the children of Israel up out of Israel, some 50,000 strong, and brought them into the land of captivity, the land of Babylon, the walled city of Babylon. Those walls spoke of captivity, and those walls said you will never, ever again be free. I don't know how many of y'all this morning feel like the enemy of your soul is trying to lead you into captivity or maybe you're in a situation where the devil is telling you that you're never going to be free but I came this morning with some good gospel news and I want to preach to you this morning that we are serving a God that knows how to deliver us in the time of our stress I mean if y'all know that when he led the Hebrews up out of Israel he robbed they were placed among the people that they did not know. They didn't know Babylonian ways and they did not know how to wear Babylonian garments and they did not understand the ways of people that were in captivity. They saw things they should have never seen and they heard things they should have never heard. They were given new names and forced to forgive their birthright. Nebuchadnezzar thought if I could strip them of their names I can strip them of their identity. But can I preach to you this morning and say to you that you do not have to be who people say you are. I'm telling you about a God this morning that no matter what you've been in your past, He has the power to make you something different. It doesn't matter what the past says you are. You might have been a liar. You might have been a thief. You might have been a scoundrel. Feet of Jesus, all sin is forgiven. And God said, I give you a new name. I'm not concerned with what the world calls you. I'm not concerned with what your family calls you or even thinks about you. A man that's a sinner can bow at the feet of Jesus. And when he gets done bowing there with one drop of blood from Jesus' pain, when he touches that man, that man will come up off of that altar. Jesus, all things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. I'm talking about this morning of God that has the power to deliver us. I wish somebody helped me this morning as I dig down into this Bible. I'm telling you this morning, whatever the devil's got you messed up with, we're serving a God that has the power to bring us out. Out of those that were marched out of the land of Israel into Babylonian captivity. Five of them stick out to us in Scripture. And we know them well. We've read about them. We've shouted and rejoiced at their stories. Their names were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel, and Ezekiel. That great prophet of God. These men stand out to us because they stood for their convictions. 
Come on, somebody. In fact, I'm going to just tell you what I think I'm going to do. This morning, I'm going to preach on the three Hebrew children. And if God will allow me to now, I'm going to preach on Daniel in the lion's den. I'm just going to jump right over three, uh, three chapters and preach old school. Are you hearing me? When Nebuchadnezzar tried to serve them food from the king's table, the Bible said, oh, Daniel stood up and said, we suffer not this night to eat, king, uh, eat meat from the king's table or to drink wine that's been offered unto idols. I'm not going to eat off the king's table and I'm not going to drink his wine. Can I preach on the table? Daniel said, as for me and these three Hebrews and Ezekiel, here's what we're going to do. We're not going to be like those other 50,000 that's in captivity. We're not putting our head down. We're not falling into defeat. We're not getting the mentality that everything's bad and mug around us. I came by to preach to somebody that no matter how much the devil's pressing you, your head's still up. Your chest is still out. And you still believe in a God that has the power to deliver us. That trust in his name. Oh, bless his holy name. And the princes of the king's house. We're not going to eat anything off the king's table. We're not going to drink the wine of the king. And they begin to tell Daniel those three Hebrew children in Ezekiel. Listen, I dare not bring you before the king ten days from now. If you don't eat the meat and drink the wine, when I bring you before the king, the king will notice that you've lost weight and you've lost color in your face and you look bad and then it'll cost me my life. But Daniel said to them people, I care what you do. If you princes will only let us eat the seed off the table. Come on somebody. Go out in the field and pull up seed. All we'll do is eat the seed and see if our God won't keep us healthy after 10 days. Do you understand after 10 days of them eating the seed they're more healthier than all the other 50,000. I came out of telling you that the seed of God that's been placed in you years ago in the midst of this battle if you just hold on to the seed of the word of God that was put in you years ago it has the power to bring you through the issue that you're facing today. Now the battle's come for these Hebrews and Nebuchadnezzar sets up this golden image and he says, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play some music. And I'm going to, when you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, psaltery, and the decimal, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. And that image looked like him. He wanted everybody to worship O King Nebuchadnezzar. And maybe the other 50,000 bowed down. But there was five that would not. Come on, somebody, help me right now. There was three of them that determined in their mind, not only are we not going to bow down, we're going to stand up and say something to the king. Oh, king, we're not trying to defile your name or your legacy. But listen, there's a God that we serve, and we cannot bow down to this golden image. If we bow down to him, we lose. God we're serving. All that king said of you bow down or die. They would not bow down. I wish I had some help in here this morning with some people that refuse to bow down to the very things that the enemy is bringing into your life and come hell or high water no matter who else bows down no matter who else gives up. I feel the Holy Ghost you're just going to hang on to what you know is right. They, 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 they say we're not bound down. They played the music. Come on, Tony. Come on, Eli. Come on. What do you got, Troy? Come on, Troy. I, I'm just going to have some fun with this. They played the music. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 
real with me right now. If he don't mess with you, it means he's got you already. But if you're doing anything to affect the kingdom, the devil is trying to tie you up. He'll try to tie you up in emotions. He'll try to tie you up with feelings. Come on, somebody. He'll try to tie you up with people. Come on, yes, sir. He'll try to tie you up by exhorting you. He'll try to tie you up by bringing you down. He'll tie you up by spreading rumors. He'll tell lies on you. He'll do whatever he can do to bind you up. But I come out of certain notice on the devil this morning.
Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Stay warm. We'll see you back.